All right, in this video, we're going to look at geometric sequences, which are different than arithmetic. Arithmetic is adding or subtracting. Uh, you have a common difference. Uh, geometric sequences are going to be with multiplying uh, in between the terms. Now, it's not called a difference when uh, you have this. So for instance, here, like from 2 to 6, you're multiplying by 3. From 6 to 18, you're multiplying by 3. 18 to 54, you're multiplying by 3. This is called a common ratio. And the term, you know, we just use R for that. So that's a little bit different. Um, but you also use, you know, some of the same terms. For instance, um, you know, the common ratio, if you want to find the common ratio, you just divide um, two consecutive terms. So you do like 6 divided by 2 equals 3. 18 divided by 6 equals 3. 54 divided by 18 equals 3, etc. It will keep going on. And you'll notice the difference, a lot of, aside from multiplying, the difference here with arithmetic sequences is these numbers are going to go up really quickly. Um, in fact, you might actually find these a bit easier than arithmetic sequences because, generally speaking, they'll ask for lower terms in these questions. They won't ask for like a 20th term because that's going to be multi millions. Um, all right, so. How do we get the general uh, rule or um, our formula for this? So let's look at the first term, um, which is 2. All right. Now, the second term is 2, or is actually 6, but I'm going to actually do it as the first term. And then there's one common ratio. So there's 1 times 3. OK? I'm just going to say there's one of these, and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. The third term is 2, and then there's two common ratios. So we'll just do 3 squared, 3 times 3. And then the fourth term is 2 times 3 to the third. So there's three common ratios. And then the fifth term would be, uh, hopefully you can see the pattern at this point, it would be 3 times 4 common ratios. Now, if we were going to write the general rule for this um, for, for this geometric sequence, or any geometric sequence for that matter, you'd have the nth term of any is, well, look, they all have, uh, they all have the first term here. So you know, they all have this, the first term. So it's going to be 2. And then they're multiplying. Now, they all have the common ratio, which is right here. Um, which would be 3. And then, now, what, what's going on up here? We have with our exponents. All right. Well, if you look at the which term it is, for instance, 2, you have 1, 3, you have 2, 4, you have 3, 5, you have 4. Okay, so... Um, basically, that's just n minus 1, and that's, that kind of is similar to the arithmetic sequence. So that would be our general term for this formula. Now, the overall formula for this would be the nth term equals the first term times the common ratio times n minus 1. And once you have that, uh, that's a good start. You know, you can write that. Then you can find, you know, the fifth term, twelfth term, etc. So let's do a problem here in just a second. All right, so if we look at a problem like this, a geometric sequence, we have 3, uh, 6, 12, 24. Um, the information we can take about out, this, out of this right away is we have the first term, which is 3. And then we have uh, the common ratio, ratio, which is times 2 in this case. And hopefully you can see that right away. Um, so our ratio is... Now remember that the uh, general term is the general term is the first term which we have times the common ratio times n minus one. So in order to write um, the nth term of this sequence, we would just do the nth term equals the first term, which is three, times the common ratio, which is two, uh, times n minus one, and we're done. See how easy that is? You just straight up right there. Now. Part B says, what is the twelfth term of the sequence? Well, okay, if we want to find the twelfth term, I mean, you can go out and multiply by two, you know, eight more times if you want, but it's much easier just to write all this down like this. So you just go two, um, three times two, and then twelve minus one, so it's going to be to the eleventh power. 
Now, what I would do is get your graphing calculator here, and you can just enter it straight up. So just three, and then two in parentheses. Now, you're probably going to have a, uh, this is a TI-83, so the version's not great, but you're just going to raise it to the 11th power. If you have the TI-84, the newest version, it will, it will have a little box, and it looks a lot easier. But you, you get the point. You just press um, this little button right here. Um, enter, so we get 6,144. So our uh, 12th term is 6,144. Now, another thing you can do on the calculator, too, which is kind of nice, because um, the it goes up so quickly with the geometric sequence, you can actually look in the table of values. So if you press Y equals, you can enter in the sequence. So it would be 3 times 2 uh, raised. Now, I'm going to have to put this in brackets to the X minus 1 power. And if I do that, that's going to actually, that's my geometric sequence. I can look at the table. So I'll go to second graph. And what you see here is, you know, the first sequence is six, 3, then 6, then 12, then 24. Well, you can actually go just arrow down and find the 12th term if you want, 6,144. So that's another way to find it. Um, if you're getting a little confused or maybe you, you have some trouble with the math, um, you can always enter it in and... I mean, if you look at this, look at 15, 16, look at how high these numbers are getting. So n normally they're, they're not going to give you anything higher than maybe the 12th term, 15th term, but it, it, it won't be, you know, the 50th term like you see in, a, in an arithmetic sequence. Now, that's just a general overview of how this uh, geometric sequences work. Uh, hopefully this helped out a little bit. I'm going to do part two where I put some IB questions that are a little more difficult. Um, with, you know, simultaneous equations and, you know, the kinds where you have to solve for K, those types of things. And that will be on part two. We also, this is also applied to compound interest, um, which I will do as well. And I'll show you how to do um, the, with the, you know, how to solve these problems with the finance app. Um, makes it pretty easy. All right. So hope this helped. Uh, take it easy. Later.